Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And on behalf of Alice and myself, we want to greet you in the precious, the wonderful name of Jesus, the only name given by which men can be saved. Name Hallelujah. above all names. Name above all names. Thank you, Jesus. We're continuing on in our study of, this is actually, we're going from In Search of Christianity, defined by the Sermon on the Mount. And we're at that point where, for the last two weeks, we've been looking at prayer. And last week, we were talking about basically what is the attitude of prayer, going into prayer. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pick up where we left off, talking today about these two words, our Father. Hallelujah. But before we do, my dear Alice is going to ask God's blessing on our time together. Amen. Father, we do praise you. We do thank you. We do bless your yes, holy Lord. name, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together, and join together in your word. And we pray, Lord, that it will accomplish what you yes, want in the hearts of those who are listening, in the hearts of those who are obeying. And Father, we just love you and praise you. And we know, Lord, that you are with us always. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for your gift of your son, Christ Jesus. Yes. All right, as I said, last week we talked, actually, I made a little mistake at the end of last week. Did you know? Yes, because I thought we were going to start today by talking about the second part of that, which is, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. But you know what? I, it, it, as I was praying this week, it just uh, I think the Lord impressed me. We really need to look at this more carefully. These two words, Our Father, mm -hmm. all right? Okay. So, because... Our prayers have to be, they should be, but they have to be directed directly to the Father, as indicated by Jesus, yes. or to the Father through the intercession of Jesus. All right? Because it says in 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God and one mediator also between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, it says in Acts 4.12, kind of which we refer to, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. And in Philippians, the Apostle Paul said, for this reason also, God highly exalted him, Jesus, mm -hmm. and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. And Jesus said in John 14.13, he said, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the far Father may be glorified in the Son. So our prayers have to be to the Father, through, through Jesus, Jesus, and not to another. Not to another man, not to another woman. We are to pray for one another, not to pray to one another. Right. And you need to get that straight Amen. if you want to have an effective prayer life, all right? If we're going to talk about our Father, there's, there's something I want to start with, and that is a 2012 report by the American-based Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Okay? Mm -hmm. They determined that these are statistics from this most reliable source, all right? 29% okay. of whites, 53% of Hispanics, 66% of American Indian and Native Alaskans, and 73% of blacks, children, are born to women who are not married. Yikes. And, yikes. I mean, yikes is right. Yeah. And think about how many are born. Well, I'm not going to even go there, all right? Mm. A vast majority of those black children, and probably other, other races too, who are born outside of marriage are in homes where the father does not live with them. Right. All right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know who your father is? What a tragic commentary that so many children don't even know who their father is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the most successful plays and movies of our times, based on the title song by the uh, singing group ABBA, mm -hmm. was Mamma Mia. Now that story revolves around the upcoming marriage of a daughter of a woman who does not know which of three men she desires. She wants her, he want, she wants her father to give her away at the marriage ceremony. Mm -hmm. But she knows that her mother was in a relationship, because her mother is single, with three men at the time of her birth. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't know which one is her father. And interestingly, neither does the mother. Right. 
I mean, she doesn't know who the, know who the father of this the child is, right? Because her mother had affairs with all three. Got this? Mm -hmm. So that neither this daughter nor the mother know who the father is because of the... I, I'll just say ungodly yeah. behavior of the mother and the fathers, okay? And the fathers don't know who. And the story is portrayed as a comedy. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing funny about this. There's absolutely nothing funny about this horrible, yet perfectly popular and acceptable, even by many Christians, which shocks me. It's a commentary on the world and the culture we live in today. And I find it incredibly ironic that the name of the award-winning group that composed and performed the title song is Abba. Yeah. The very word, the name, that Jesus used to cry out to his Father on the night he went into the garden mm -hmm. to pray. Right? And the word teaches us that this is a name that we too can cry out to call upon our Father. It says in Galatians 4, 6, Because you are sons... God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. For you have not received the spirit of slavery, leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. Paul wrote that to the Romans, Romans 8.15. You see, the adversary, Satan, who has come to steal and destroy, would love to steal that magnificent truth from us one that most truly defines our relationship with our God. <clears throat> do, you, do you know God? I mean, do you know God as your father? Let me ask you this. Does God know you as his child? Yes. Okay. I would happily say that many, many, if not the majority of people who repeatedly pray the, the our father may indeed not be praying to their father at all. Right. You know, the most confrontational, I, I really believe the single most confrontational statements that Jesus made to the Pharisees and others who followed them, mm -hmm. and the words that had to fuel their hatred of him, were these. In Matthew 22, Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. It's Matthew 23. What did I say? 22. Oh, uh, Suitable help me. Matthew 22. No. <laughs> we need to read Matthew 22. Matthew 23, verses 29 to 31. Ta-da! Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You testify against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. And more, more powerfully even, there when, you know, he's in the temple area teaching... And Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and to the other Jews around him. And they want to debate with him. But what Jesus says in John 8, 44 is this. You are of your father, the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. I mean, here, these are the people that prided themselves on, you know, we're sons of Abraham. God is our father. Jesus, no, you're, you're, your father's the devil. The religious leaders are the people of God. That's who he's talking to. And Jesus says they are not children of God. They're not children of God. They're not the wheat. They're the tares that had been planted by their father, the enemy. Matthew, look at the, go look at the parable in Matthew 13, verse 24 to 80. 24 to 30. Pray for me out there. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, are you a child of God? Because if you're not a child of God, you can't pray our Father. You can't pray to the Father, right? What makes you a child of God? I'm going to give you six things that we're going to just talk about a little bit. and You, you can look at more. And by the way, <clears throat> feel free to write to us at office at BibleTalk.com or go to our Facebook page, In Search of Christianity. Here are the six things that I put. Are you a child of God? You have to be born again. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. You have to be a peacemaker. You have to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. 
You know you're a child of God because he disciplines you. And you know you're a child of God because Herod's still trying to kill you. <laughs> when those things are true, then you will understand his love for us all the more. You have to be born again, okay? Yes. I'm going to read from John chapter 3, first, the first three verses. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. I'm sure you know this. He was a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You have to be born again. He went on to tell Nicodemus, in you know, the next couple of verses, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I say to you, you must be born again. Flesh is not going to go into the kingdom. No. Flesh cannot inherit the kingdom. The Spirit can. But it says in Hebrews 12, 9, God is the Father of spirits. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, John wrote, that we would be called the children of God. And such we are. Okay? Yes. 1 John 3, 1. If you have not been born again, you are not a child of God. That's You're a child of Adam. And that death that he suffered because of his disobedience when he left the presence of God, was kicked out of the garden. Because that's what death is. That's the separation. separation from God. And remember it says in Isaiah, sin separates you from God. So you're either a child of Adam or a child of God. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. It says, Paul wrote to the Romans, and he said in Romans 8, 14, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The Spirit of God will lead you into all truth, even the hard truth that you must die to yourself, deny yourself, and give up control of your life to the one you call Lord. If you're not being led by the Spirit of God, you're not a child of God, and you have no right to pray, Father. You have to be a peacemaker. Yes. Okay? We live in a world today, it's always been this way, in varying degrees, we live in a world right now where it is so true, where you're seeing wars and rumors of wars. Yes. I mean, you know, the United States of America has been involved in a war that this for the last 15 years. 15 years. Jesus said in the beginning of this Sermon on the Mount, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. We have a ministry of reconciliation. That's why, you know, this is based on what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Are you a child of God? Are you, are you sharing this word of reconciliation? That people can be right with God the Father? That God is prepared to accept them and receive them because of the atoning work of his son Jesus Christ? My goodness gracious, we are surrounded by terrorism. We are surrounded by attacks. We are surrounded by such hatred and bitterness and not just by terrorists, by the way. So you have to be loving your enemies and praying for those who persecute you. Is this not what he said here in the Sermon on the Mount? But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. If you're not praying for your enemies, yes. if you're not loving your enemies, praying for those who persecute you, you're not a child of God. I mean, not, I'm not making this up. And this is not my idea. These are the very words of Jesus Christ. And by the way, those words are what will judge us on the last day. 
Do you love your enemies? Yes, that includes Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, that includes ISIS, that, that includes the North Koreans, the Russians, the Chinese. I mean, you name who you want. It includes the Republicans and the Democrats, depending on which side of the, that thing you fall on. Mm -hmm. If we're not loving our enemies, we're not children of God. And, and I'm telling you, this is a hard thing in the times that we live in. Because we are, you know, the world has always been involved in war. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. I mean, ever since Cain and Abel, right? Yes. But never has it been so omnipresent because every it seems like I'm, every network has a 24-hour news program. The yes. Internet is filled with news. We are constantly aware and conscious of what's going on. Do you, do you love the people that are so hateful? Can you love the unloving? Can you love the unlovable? Yes, you can. It is called the power of the Holy Spirit. It is because the love of God has been poured into your heart through that Holy Spirit. And it's because that word of God, that word of reconciliation has been written on the tablets of your heart. But you have to choose to do it. Otherwise, don't pray, our Father. Don't pray to the Father if you're not doing that. You can tell that you're a child of God. You know how? Because he disciplines you. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? This I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. Listen to this. But if you are without discipline, of which we all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. That's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. And yet, such a vast number of churches today are preaching and teaching that there's peace, peace, when in fact there's no peace. Because God is, dare I say it, mm -hmm. intolerant of sin. Mm -hmm. Intolerant of sin, it must always be dealt with. And he deals with us as a loving father, discipline. You know, we don't even like the, we, we don't like the word disciple anymore. We don't like the word, those who talk about discipline. We like, we like mentor. We like mentor, that, that man out of Greek mythology, yeah. because he makes suggestions. You know what? Jesus, you, Jesus doesn't make suggestions. The Word of God is not filled with suggestions. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, they are the commandments of God. If you're in a place where they're tickling ears and not preaching that whole counsel of God, get out. Yes. Come out from their midst and be separate. Because you need to know God's love, because he disciplines you, trains you up in the ways you should go. I wrote, Herod tries to kill us. You know what? When, when the Messiah came into the world, when the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, when Herod heard that the Messiah had been born, in an effort to prevent his life and ministry, this evil king ordered the death of everybody that resembled Jesus, the infant Jesus. Because that's the only way he could identify him, right? Yes. Was by his age. Right. So he ordered there. Well, let me read it. Then when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he wasn't tricked by the Magi, they were being obedient to God. Mm -hmm. He became very enraged and sent and slew all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its vicinity from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the Magi. The only way he could be sure of getting Jesus was killing everybody that looked like Jesus. Mm. Do you think that's changed? <laughs> Do you think that's changed? You look like Jesus, mm. spiritually. You sound like Jesus. You act like Jesus. Yes. You certainly should be. So the enemy is stupid and easily confused in the face of the Holy Spirit. That liar by nature is very uncomfortable in the presence of truth. So he will do all in his power. And by the way, he has been disarmed. Right. He truly has no power over you other than to make suggestions. He's a mentor to your flesh. Yes. When we are attacked by that enemy who goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom I may devour, right? Mm -hmm. When we are attacked, we should respond as the apostles of old. 
that when they were commanded by the Sanhedrin not to proclaim and teach and preach the name of Jesus in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. they did yes. exactly that. Because that was the command from God. Yes. So, they called the apostles in and they flagged them and ordered them again not to speak in the name of Jesus and then release them. Mm -hmm. So they went out on their way from the presence of the council rejoicing that they had been considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. Acts 5, 40 and 41. That has to be our response to attacks from the enemy, is to rejoice. Okay? Unless you are a child of God, you may not pray, Father. If you are not yet a child of God, you can, however, cry out to the Lord God Almighty, with a prayer of repentance and acceptance of his amazing grace offered through and only through the atoning work of his son, Jesus. And then, then you can pray, Father. You know, I, I just find it interesting. Islam doesn't call Allah Father. I think they have like a hundred names, 99 names for their Allah, but not one of them is Father. They don't have, they don't have, and they're not offering by the God that they serve. He doesn't want a personal relationship with them, all right? Our God wants to take you like a child. Unless you're like a little child, you're not going to get into the kingdom. Yes. And he wants to just wrap you up in his love. Yes, you can call him Father. You can call him Abba. And he will call you son or daughter. Okay. Praise God. Okay, I wanted to get into that. Now, then we, we are going to get into the next part now. Okay. And that is the next part of the prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Mm. You know what hallowed means? Holy. It, well, it means well, to, to bless. To, to make holy. Well, yes, it's to bless, to make holy, right? Remember I said that prayer is about more about listening to God than talking to God, right? Mm -hmm. So listen to God. The very first commandment in Exodus 20 says, You shall have no other gods before me. And then it goes on, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Let's just get a little controversial. The name of the Lord, as best as I can pronounce it, is Yahweh. Yes. Y-H-W-H. -H. You know, the Jews, they think... Today, that name is too holy to be spoken, all right? So they pray, Baruch Hashem, blessed be the name. They call him the name, Hashem, all right? Yes. God's name is revered by the Jews. They wouldn't speak or write the name of God in anything other than Scripture because it was too holy. Yes. Even today, observant Jews, if you see the way they write, if they want to put God, they will put G hyphen D. Right? They wouldn't even put G-O-D, right? And, and they'll, that's saying something. They'll say something that's a substitute like Hashem, the name. But they don't name the name. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, Moses, who God used to bring those people out and form them into a people, he said, I won't go into Egypt unless I know your name. All right? There most assuredly should be a, a reverence for the name of God. Let me just talk real quickly, and I'm like, I don't want to get make this, it's not a doctrine, it's not something that's, but I do want you to know that the word Jehovah comes out of the fact that if you know Hebrew, Hebrew is originally written without any vowels, okay? So you have the name of God, it's called the tetragram, tetragram, it's Y-H-W-H, as I say, so that would be put there in the, in the Bible, but since in, the, in the, I think it was the ninth century, they started to add the vowels to the words by using little dots and lines underneath the Hebrew writing. Mm -hmm. When it came to, when they, were, when they would be doing this, when they came to the word Yahweh uh, in the Bible, they would not, since it was too holy, they would not put the vowels for Yahweh underneath that word. Mm -hmm. So they would put the vowels for the word Adonai, Lord underneath it. And okay, got that? So now you got this combination of the of the, the word Y H W H and underneath it 
the vowels for a different word, the word for Lord. Right. And then, of course, when this is done and translated by the Roman Catholic Church into Latin, and they're doing all this, mm -hmm. when they come upon that, there is no Y in Latin. Yeah. So they substituted J for the Y. And there's no W in Latin, so they substitute the letter V, which is what they had. I mean, that's where the, word, the letter of W comes from, is a double V. Mm -hmm. And this is, what, this is the origin of the word Jehovah, okay? And I, just, I want you to know that. I mean, it, you know, let, let that sink into your spirit and do with it what you will. This is not a, it's a made-up name. No. No. Okay. In Leviticus 22.32, it says, you shall not profane my holy name, but I will be sanctified among the sons of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. And, and by the way, in my translation of the Bible, and, and yours very most likely, it doesn't, use, it doesn't put, use the word Yahweh or Jehovah most. In, it typically just substitutes the word Lord, right? So I don't, I, I'm not going to go down that whole road here. In Ezekiel thirty nine seven, God said, "My holy name I will make known in the midst of my people Israel. I will make known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let my my holy name be profaned any more. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel." Well, we're going to run short on time, so I don't I don't want to get caught up in this. I do want to go back to this next week. All right. Um, but one of the things. It, it astounds me, and, and I, this is not new, I've been saying this for 40 years, that in the governmental schools of the United States of America, you can go into any school, government-run school, and use the name of Jesus Christ without any problem whatsoever. As long as you are profaning that name and using it as a curse. Because then the government will defend your right of free speech. But should you use that name, that only name given by which men can be saved, if you use that name, the name above all names, as God intends, then no, you're not allowed to do that in the schools. How could this possibly happen? And you know what? Like the apostles, you need to do what God has commanded, regardless of what the world says. Okay? We need to learn to call on Abba. And because we need to show that childlike trust in our loving relationship with God. We need to call on the Father because that shows respect. And, you know, I'm, I'm running out of time. I just want to tell you this. I was sitting in a restaurant with Alice one day, and at a table next to us there were four guys, and one of the guys kept saying, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. So I got up, and I walked over to the table, and I said, listen, I don't, I don't want to interrupt your lunch, but I said, I'd like to ask you a question. And the guy said, oh, yeah. And I said, I just wanted to know, if, I hear you keep saying Jesus. I was wondering if you were praying or cursing. Because if you're praying, I'd like to join you. And if you're cursing, I'd like to pray for you. So, there you have it. God bless you. Be back next time because we are going to talk. We are going to get to that place that we will pray with absolute confidence because we know the love of the Father to whom we are praying that He has shown us in His Son, Christ Jesus, upon that cross. We are going to, we are going to have the power of a right relationship with God in prayer. So be back with us next week. Same time, same channel. God bless. God bless you a lot. Bye bye. So I cherish that old rugged cross till my trophies at last.